Welcome back to Falcon's Rest. I thought in today's in-service what we would do is go through getting your feathered one dressed for free flight. Putting on his equipment, flying Jesses, all the rest of it. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks, some things I've learned along the way. Most of this I've had to figure out for myself. Um, and this is going to obviously be really helpful, I hope, to the novices and apprentices who are tuning in, and thank you for that, by the way. And hopefully, some of the more experienced falconers that are out there, I'll show you something that you're thinking, well, geez, why didn't I think of that, right? Um, and obviously, always, we love to have feedback. So if you've got a trick or something that you have learned along the way that you'd like to share with us, I'd love, love, love to be on the receiving end of that. So why don't we just crack on and get Mojave ready for some, some free flying this afternoon and uh, see how it goes. All right. So, what do we need? What should we know? Where do we start? First things first, Mojave has flown every day for basically a week and a half. So about 10 days. And out of that 10 days, there's only been one day where we weren't able to fly him. So he's getting increasingly fitter and fitter every day. As Friedrich tells us many times in the book, keep the lesson short. So I'm not out there belaboring it with him. I'm keeping it fun and interesting and he's eager to go every day. So we're nicely in his winter weight pipe. Uh, today he weighed in at 1246 grams. So this was where I recorded it, 1244, I beg your pardon. Um, and he has been floating around that, that region of his, of his weight now for several days. Now what we're looking for, what this helps us to do is as we're figuring out, okay, I gave him this much food, this is where his weight was the next morning after he cast up a casting, right? So we're trying to get this nice level line. We don't want all this happening. That's going to that's gonna drive your bird crazy. It's going to drive you crazy uh, because you're trying to find a place where, okay, I can fly her today. I can't fly her today. How did I manage to pop her weight up so high? So we're trying to, to, to get a sense of, okay, this much food, in this kind of weather keeps him right here, right? Um, if it gets a little colder and I still want to fly him, I'm going to have to give him a little bit more help at night because he's shivering to keep himself warm. Now, of course, red tails, dense, dense layers of feathers, so I can't give him too much, but I don't want him to get cold overnight either, right? So this helps you to establish that, that very gentle oscillation, if there's any at all. You basically want that line to be as level as it can be over time so you're seeing okay this much food this length of time for exercise is giving me these kinds of weights over a period of days all right so his weight is exactly where i want it sort of on the high end of where i want it for this time of year but he's really responsive here he's really happy and eager to go so so i'm good with that now what he's going to get today um, is some hopper mice and these are about half the size of adult mice. Now these of course are bred in a lab. Uh, regardless of that, wash your hands anytime you've been handling mice. They're vermin at the end of the day, lab raised or not, um, make sure you're washing your hands. And for your feather one's sakes as well. Yes, they're eating these things, but we don't need to take any risks at any level. So what I want to do first, I roughly know how many mice is going to give me what kind of weight, but I always double check. So how much am I actually physically giving him? Turn my scale on. Now I'm going to weigh them, not in the plastic bag. Believe it or not, these little plastic bags will give you a couple of grams of false weight. So this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. This is going to come in at about 56 grams. Now yesterday, he had three adult mice and a head and neck from a quail. And that was 72 grams of food. So his weight went up yesterday, over yesterday's weight from 1234 to 1244, which it is today, right? Which is still in our pipe. So 58 grams of mice is perfect. It's not going to overfeed him. It's not supposed to get too cold tonight, and tomorrow he should be eager and ready to go again. All right. 
Now, if I knew that the weather was going to drop to 20 below overnight, we were going to get blowing snow and all this kind of carry on, and it was going to knock us out of being able to fly tomorrow, I'd give him some more. I'd probably give him, you know, between 70 and 80 grams of food just to make sure that he was happy, still weigh him tomorrow, see where his weight came in, and then as long as it didn't pop up too high and weather complied with us the following day, I can get back to work because I haven't fed him serially too much to eat over too many days. Okay, so I've weighed the food. I know that it's 58 grams, and I'm going to make a note, 58 grams hopper mice times 6. So that's going to be a nice little bit of fun for me and Mo when we get out there. Okay, so what else do I need to know? I want to hide those because when I bring him in, because he's going to get excited, he, he'll do anything for mice guys, anything, almost anything. Tap dancing is right out, but we won't go there. Okay, so. What do I need for him to free fly? Well, I'm going to go into my falconry bag and get in the habit of always using the same pockets, guys, because I've done this to myself I don't know how many times. I put this in one pocket, I've got this in the other one behind that, and oh, I put the flying jesses in the wrong side, and I'm flurrying around going, where did I put them, where did I put them? Just get in the habit of using the same pocket for the same gear every time. Um, so. Flying Jesses, the little clippers for trimming the little zip strip, which I'm going to put the transmitter on the back of his leg with. Okay, and I'm done with this for today, so now it goes back in there. I know exactly where I put it. All right. Now, the next thing I want to do, of course, is arm and test my transmitter and my receiver. Now, we've talked about this before when we talked about how to use the Marshall telemetry. You are never going to be sorry if you test your receiver and your, your transmitter every single time you're going to go out free flying. Now, remember, you want the battery, in this case it's an energizer battery, you want that word to be facing up toward you. And put the housing on. And you want this firmly tight. Don't over tighten. This metal is not that strong. If you over tighten, you're going to strip it. So, uh, I don't want anything electronic near this to interfere with the signal. So, I'll just put it here on the shelf. Okay. Nothing electronic around there unless the pickled beets are hiding something I don't know about. Right. So, this is where we come to our great big update. So, let's get the telemetry this holster. All right, so we just need the camera to focus in on this. Now, when we talked about using the Marshall telemetry earlier in the summer, I glossed over a couple of things because, uh, full disclosure, I was completely ignorant about something that's actually kind of important. Um, and I've been blissfully going along through time using the receiver and doing just fine with it. Uh, we've recovered Sabre twice and we recovered, recovered Yadi once uh, using it the way that I understood I should be using it. And I've actually been missing a small step. Now, when we look at this, um, all the things that I talked about before, the low battery light up in the upper right hand corner, um, the band selector is here, this is a channel selector, right here. Now, actually, I'll just fetch the transmitter back for a second. When we look at the back of the transmitter, okay, it says 218.025. Now, I've just been using my telemetry receiver based on 218. And I've been forgetting, because I didn't know, to put in the channel selection for 025. So it's been working really well. <laughs> I've been able to get a nice loud chuck chuck sound whenever I've been pointed in the right direction uh, with the array. But we're going to go over that step right now to keep you guys updated and in the loop. And I have to thank William very much for bringing this to my attention. Bless you. <laughs> this is how we learn. Okay. So setting that back there. So when we arm the receiver. Same process. 
first of all, I've got to get batteries into it, right? And you'll remember, you guys, that the batteries, it takes six AAA batteries. So, first things first, what I want to do is I want to make sure, yep, I'm set on 218 for the bandwidth, right? And what it has sounded like before, if I just deploy the elements here, the array, now that it sounds like that with the channel selector selected as well. So now I've got a beeping as opposed to, let me just do this, I'll just shut this off. I've been working from that. And it's worked, but it hasn't been quite right. It hasn't been 100% right. All right. So I'll just reset that again. Okay. And that's what the setup now looks like. So now we know it's, it's armed, it's functioning properly. I've got that little detail in there for remembering to select for the channel that the transmitter is sending its signal out on. And I know it's ready for taking Mo out for a little bit of fun in a few minutes. All right. Um, again, like I say, 15 years just goes to show that we all have things to learn, myself included. Um, and I'm just really, really grateful to, to William for doing that thing that Leah and I are always asking for. Give us feedback, give us comments, give us guidance if you have some tricks and whatnot that uh, we're missing or something that's worked for you. And William took up the, uh, the banner and, and got in touch with us, and it was lovely. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so a little habit, put it in the back of your falconry bag straight away, right? So you know it's there, you're out there by yourself flying your falcon, your eagle, your hawk. Uh, it's like, oh, did I remember? Oh, yes, I did. I've got it. Okay. Because they've decided they're going to have a little adventure without you. All right. When you've got a feathered one on your glove, you're working with one free hand. And you want to make it as simple and smooth and relaxed as possible for when you're putting the telemetry, the transmitter on, as well as their flying justice. So a couple of little things I've learned along the way. I take the zip strip and I put a bend in it in the middle. Okay. And you see it's got another one here and this is the part that goes into the little latching, ratcheting system that holds it. It's a one-way system. You put it in, you're not going to be able to pull it back out again. You've got to snip it off. Right. But what I'll do is I'll take and I'll bend that little arm ahead of time. Right. So that now on the day, I've got feathered one on my glove. I'm trying to put this through the back of the anklet. I can get it back there. It's kind of holding the transmitter for me. And then it becomes an easy thing to sort of slip over and push it through. All right? So quick little trick to make that a bit easier for yourself. Now, last thing, you'll remember the paracord flying jesses. Right? So there's no loop, there's nothing at the end here that they can catch on. They're quite smooth, so even on the roughest branches, highly unlikely this is going to snag on anything. Okay, So you'll see I've got some little loops on one end, of course. right? And inevitably, what they slowly start to do is they start to flatten out in my pocket right? when they're in my telemetry bag. So they'll flatten out like that. Now what I've learned to do in advance, because again I'm putting on a flying Jesse one-handed, is I will take and push this down. So it's almost like the letter T, and then it becomes the letter Y as I pinch this, like so. Ta-da! Okay, so now I've got a nice open loop that I can get that flying Jesse through. So, I've got everything I need. I'm ready. Now it's time to go and get them, bring them in, get them dressed, and go out and have a bit of fun. With those six little hopper mice, we're going to have a nice sort of duration of workout without it being too lengthy and, uh, and too boring for them because you want to keep it interesting. Remember, Friedrich is always telling us, keep the lesson short, right? So we're going to keep the lesson short enough while giving him room to stretch and try to land in some big trees and 
try some different branches and different things like that come at me from different directions, keeping it interesting, keeping it fun. It's as much about their mindset and their learning as about the two of you having an experience together. All right, so uh, let's just crack on with this. I'm, I'm eager to show you where he's at, and it's a lovely day. It's a perfect day for it, so let's just get him and get him in here. We gotta get him undressed from his nap time clothes and get him dressed for flying. So first things first, I've got the Jesses in the safety position. Now the basement door is closed, so if there was a bit of a catastrophe, he's not getting very far. Right? Take your leash. Of course, the first thing I need to do is just a little bit wigged out by that stuff on there. First thing I need to do is get the swivel off. Now, Jesses are a little bit cold from being out in the early winter weather, late fall, early winter. So, one at a time. And then, of course, once I've got it free, well, you've got to sit still. We'll be out in a minute. Got it free, and now I've got to do the next one. Now, remembering, of course, guys, that particularly with the big hawk, they have very impressive feet. So we are listening to the signals coming through our glove from his feet. Now, he's not gripping me. He's not doing anything that says, I'm going to get you, sucker. But the moment he does, I want to get this hand out of the, the sort of the danger zone, right? If he does. Okay. Swivel in my pocket. In my pocket. Okay, he's right. It should go down here in a deeper pocket. All right. Yes. Yelling is generally considered rude. Just saying. Okay. So, get him to step up onto my glove. Now, I've got control of one Jess. I'm going to take his Muse Jess out. Put that deep in my pocket. That's right. And you notice I got the anklet pointing toward me. So, round goes. Get the part with the snare. Get the end with the snare. And then just a little bit of fooling around. All right, now I'm going to ask him to sort of step back off my fingers there so I can switch. Put that into the safety position. Now I want this one. It goes deep in my pocket. Yeah, I know, my love. I know. And once again with feeling. Okay, you see how quick that was? Because I'd done that little bit of work earlier. So now I just need to put the transmitter on his leg. So, because I've got two bends in it now, in order to get it in here, it's pretty straightforward. Right? Sometimes you'll find your hawk, when they hear this little noise of it just scrunching down, they'll tend to grip. It's an instinctual thing. They're not mad or anything like that. It just triggers that, that, that reflex to grip harder. And then he relaxes again. And then last but not least, now, when you're trimming these off, these are very, very sharp. So we don't want to, sh we don't want to trim it right up against the snare. We want to come out a couple of millimeters and, and sort of as level as we can. Right? So it's flat. There's really nothing for him to cut himself on there. All right. Let's take this guy for some flying.
nice little workout with him. He's doing really well. We're having some breeze today, some gusts, and he needs to, to learn to fly crosswind to that and rudder into it and, you know, sort of crab into the wind, as it were. Coming to the glove really nicely. He's getting a better handle on what makes a good landing spot in a tree. Yeah, so if you have any questions about any part of what we talked about today, getting your feathered one dressed, any other tricks that you may have learned, like I say, that you'd like to share with us, we'd love to see it. Remember to do all the things, guys. Subscribe, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, tell your friends, your family members, your general practitioner about us. Hit that notification bell. Bong. All of the, uh, the prizes are going to be going out in the next few days, uh, so keep an eye on your mail if you've been notified by Leah that you were one of our winners. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time at Falcon's Rest. Thanks again, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.